Here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, today's webinar. I'm with uh, Lauren today. Hello, Lauren. Hey, everyone. So today we have uh, analysis and connecting the dots because uh, we well know that uh, there's uh, tons of analysis in, uh, in uniform. There's lots of data, uh, but it all comes down to uh, how do you interpret uh, the data that you can collect. Uh, and uh, I think we have a great webinar today. Uh, so Lauren uh, is going to show us uh, a few uh, analysis and a few uh, conclusions. And uh, just uh, be aware that uh, this uh, webinar is recorded and you will be getting a link uh, to this video uh, as a reference or if you can't uh, watch the whole thing, then you can uh, do it uh, in the future. All right, Lauren, so the, the floor is yours. All right. All right. So what I'm going to show you today is how, uni how Uniform can help you uh, look for a problem or an opportunity to be more productive or efficient in the future, and what you can do right now to help yourself with that ahead of time. So. Think about your future self and save yourself some time today is where we're gonna go. So we're gonna take a look at fertility, health and production data, and look at it maybe with a little bit more critical eye than you're used to. So the farm that we're taking a look at right now started with a program several years ago, I think 2016. So there's a lot of uh, history built into this farm. And we are trying to find a way to improve their day-to-day -day management. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at here today is the fertility analysis overview. And this is a really nice overview of what's going on in the herd right now, but also over time. So this can be viewed by month, which is probably what you're typically used to seeing it um, set up as. But right now I've got the years over time set up at the top. So we're actually looking at six years worth of data for this farm, and we can see changes over time where we've gotten better, where we've maybe slipped. Uh, the first thing that always comes to my eye in this report is the total cows in herd and the total milking cows over time. As many, many of us in Canada have seen, we're growing our herd sizes with the quota that we can get. So this herd has moved from 369 milking cows to 512. As you scroll down more, there are some nice overviews about young stock. So we've got the total number of calves born per year, as well as the male, female, and twin percentages. Uh, the twin percentages is a little bit interesting. If you've got some calving issues or uh, maybe metabolic disorders, retained placenta, something like that, that pop up, you can see if your twinning percentage may be correlated. So this farm's at 4%. Um, is that normal? Is that not normal? That's uh, more of a by farm, I think, uh, decision to make, but kind of a nice reference tool there. As we go down further, we can see that our heifer reproduction is in line pretty well. We've got last year 1.8 services per pregnancy. Uh, expected calving age on the heifers is 22 months. And they're pretty consistent with their first calving age uh, around 22, around 22 months. The third section on this report is related to the milking cows. So here we've got the total number of calvings for the for each year, and then you've got additional information about days to first heat. Um, we've got the average number of services per pregnancy again. And we can see this is something that they've improved over time. 2018, it was 2.4. And actually in 2021, it was down to 1.94. So they're really making progress there. We've also got the calving interval information down here. And we can see that that's trending downward as well. So they're really focusing on that reproduction. Related to fertility, my next step is always the Fertility KPI USA report. Um, oh, before I get there, one more thing to mention. The suspicious data at the bottom may be something you totally ignore when you open this report, but it's really useful as you're looking at the, the grid because anything that's gray is related to something suspicious. 
So at the bottom here, we see for three years, they did really good. Only six suspicious data points in the whole database for three years. And then in 2020 and 2021, and so far already this month, uh, last month and a half, they've got a lot of suspicious data. So something like that always calls my attention to what's going on, why is this happening? And maybe if you think about the farm, you know that there's something going on, but if you don't know, this farm had a new herdsman start late in the year in 2020. So that could be a training issue or an onboarding issue uh, with that new person entering data. So then we'll jump to the fertility KPIs. Uh, the insemination rate, which is the first one that you open when you see the screen. I've got this sorted to heifers here uh, by calendar date. Just thinking about that data entry and the suspicious data makes me curious uh, to see what's actually happening with the reproduction. So on the insemination rate uh, tab here, we can see that in the graph on the right, and I'll make that bigger for you. So here in the graph, we've got only four breedings on heifers since the 1st of January. And don't know if you noticed or not, but this is a 500 cow dairy. So I highly suspect that that's not accurate. And then that'd be something that we could continue to look into uh, with the on-farm team. We've also got the insemination rate on the cow, so we could check on them. And again, that seems to be much lower than their average number of inseminations. We'll flip over to the conception rate tab. And what we're looking at here is the estrus signs for cows and heifers. Uh, it's sorted here by the number inseminated. So the more, the more inseminations, um, the more reliable the data is going to be. Uh, but we can see here that it seems to be going pretty good. Uh, maybe the mounting trigger isn't super useful for them, but they don't use it that often either. So I see this and as then, a very good. Uh, sorry, I see this as a yeah. very good way uh, to to see, for example, if your activity detection system works uh, correctly or not, uh, because that that second uh, row there tells you that exactly. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's great, and that's that goes uh, that applies to the last year by default, I believe. Uh, yes, by default, but you can change that in the properties. So if you wanted to say from the start date of a new activity system or a new breeding protocol, you could change that in the properties. Great. One thing that I find interesting here on the conception rate is also this unknown reason. So we've got um, 77 inseminations that we don't know why. Uh, why were they inseminated? So that data is useful useful in analysis but we've got nothing to track it to so it's just sit, sitting here and we don't know you know could this be activity detection could it be mounting um, it's 58 percent conception rate so unknown seems to be working but why um, is that why mounting is too low is that maybe a precinct that's not getting recorded properly so that's uh, another point where the way that you're entering the data and the amount of time that you spend at the entry point can really create valuable information down the road for you as you begin to take an analysis approach to your data. Another one that I find super useful here is the breeders. So this particular farm has a lot of breeders. We can slide that over to see a little bit better. Um, and again, on this one, we've got the breeder on the left and the conception rate uh, and results to the right. But again, we've got a breeder that's unknown here. So this breeder should be proud of what they're doing, 58% conception rate, but we can't prove who it was. So if this is one person, we could change that and make it recorded properly. Uh, but if it's split across the group, then maybe we need to be a little bit more careful with how the data is getting put in. Okay, next thing that we can jump to um, to dig a little bit deeper into the reproduction, uh, I really like to look at the services per conception. So we can go to the insemination analysis. 
And when you open this, a lot of people just close it right away because it's just a grid. But if you play around for a second and open up the summary, you'll find that there's a, a ton of useful information contained in the summary report. Just a quick note to navigate this one, uh, up at the top, you've got green arrows and that'll take you page by page. The blue arrow will drop you over to the last page. And then you've also got, if you, if you prefer to scroll, you can also change it so it's a scrollable um, page to page option. We get that question a lot. Um, so we're gonna go back to a couple pages back. Um, in your insemination analysis, there's a list of the bulls that you're using in the herd. And you can see which ones are sexed and which one are conventional. Uh, the sorted female ones have the little gender symbol. And you can see how many times was that used, how many pregnancies resulted, uh, and that's split by heifers, first lactation, and mature cows. And then you've got services, how many were uh, uncertain or not yet ready to be preg checked, and then how many pregnant, as well as your rate. And the far right column is gonna be your inseminations per pregnancy. So you can not only get this overall for your herd, but you can get this by bull. And if you've got a bunch of bulls in here, you'll have a bunch of data. Go down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, then the next page over from that is going to be your breeders. And you can see what, what method it was. So if you're hiring in somebody to do your AI, you've got your service AI. If you're doing it yourself, it's going to say DIY. You've got the breeder name. Again, we've got our no-name breeder. And we actually have a no-name service technician as well. And then at the far right, you've got the inseminations per pregnancy. So you can, if you're really curious how you're doing on services per um, pregnancy for a paid inseminator, for example, you could come in here and see that result really quickly. So I think that one's a, a nice one to check out. And then you've also got a nice summary for your gender sorted success rates. So you've got um, a full count of your conventional versus your sorted female where it's been used, and then your conception rate on that, as well as the inseminations per pregnancy. So this summary is really useful as you're analyzing repro data. Next, when I'm digging through a herd to look for opportunities for improvement, I always come to health. So we'll jump into the health event analysis. And in the health event analysis, this will be different. It'll look different for all of you. It'll be the health events that you're actually using. So these could be standard ones or they could be custom ones. Um, what I've got here is by health condition. And then we can click on the column for total to sort up or down by the frequency that that event has happened in the herd within our selected time frame. So we're looking at one year right now. Uh, but again, in the properties, if you wanted to change that, you can go ahead and sort out what date range you wanted to look at. Looking at this herd, it's four of the top six are all related to foot and leg. So that really starts to raise a flag for me on something's going on. Um, if all of these events are related to foot and legs, we've got calving problems, um, some mastitis coming up in here and then a lot of cystic cows. Hey, Lauren, uh, just uh, just uh, one uh, precision here, because um, I'm getting the questions from uh, our attendees uh, a lot. Uh, so some of you cannot find this uh, analysis in your license. And the reason is uh, this is only available to Uniform Canada Gold license. So if you have the silver license, this analysis will not be part of it. If you want access to it, uh, you can contact us and we'll give you a 30-day uh, free trial. Yep, very good. When you're looking into this report, um, 
we can look at it not only by the health condition, but also by the days in milk. So if you know you've got an early lactation thing going on, you know your fresh cows aren't doing super, you can come in here and take a peek at what's the highest um, health incident that's happening in those early days. And then the third tab, this one we can sort out by lactation number, and it splits out all the way to six lactations. So you can really fine tune which demographic of the herd is getting affected by certain things if you sort here. And again, using that column sorting, you can find the highest incident for a certain lactation and dig into that. Um, as you're looking at these, if you think, oh, wow, 61 is a lot, who are those cows? We can click into that eye and actually scroll through and see how many of these cows, um, a lot of these cows are gone already from the herd. Um, what other cows are here? And then if there is a cow that's got the same, um, if she's got a, a repeat case, there'd be a checkbox in the uh, same case column there. So you can see how many times one cow is duplicating for you. And if you wanted to dive in deeper on any cow, you can go right to their record from here. So thinking about this as uh, foot issues and mastitis issues are our primary um, problems here. Let's take a look at the culling analysis and see if that translates into what's leaving the herd. The culling analysis is five different tabs that you can take a look at. Uh, it's going to open by default, default on this grid. Uh, the sales and dead list. Basically, you can look at the individual animals. Uh, what I'm more interested in when I'm analyzing culling is the reason and the frequency. So on the reasons tab, we can take a look at the percentage of the total. So we can sort by that column again. And again, we've got an unknown reason for 15% of the herd is leaving. So this is another point of really got to focus on how are we putting in that data so that we can figure out, okay, is this actually a fertility problem? Is it a foot problem? Is it a mastitis? What's going on here? Uh, so that's a 15% of our data basically is useless to us in our analysis purposes if we don't record that. And then we find the fertility and the legs and feet like we expected and the mastitis. Again, if you're looking for a days in milk correlation with what's going on, that tab is here also. So you can see when are cows leaving the herd and sort that by the percentage to say, okay, so greater than 300 days, that doesn't get me too worried. Maybe those are do not breed cows and we don't need to worry about them. Um, but if there's a flag, you know, about their first 60 days in milk or something like that, and you've got a problem, you could find that here. It would really it makes it a really quick way to find out what's your exact bottleneck point. And then the age one is also super interesting. Uh, if you're calling a huge percentage of your first lactation cows, you'll be able to find it here. And you can find your average age on your calls. So that's kind of a nice one as a reference. Well, let's dig into our mastitis a little bit and take a look at the dry off analysis. The dry off analysis gives you a look at new infections of mastitis, chronic infections of mastitis, and cured or healthy cows after the dry period. In this bar chart, we're looking at all lactations. The pale color is the healthy cows. The green is our cured cows, this sort of purpley is a chronic cow, and then the red at the top is going to be a new infection after the dry period. This one I like to look at by lactation. So we've got all here. We can click on the right hand side to add the second lactation. So then we switch it uh, to look at just second lactation. And we can see how, how we've been doing there. It looks pretty good couple months maybe getting high on us in December uh, and November, getting over 10%. And then we can take a look at the third lactation. 
And we can see that there's a pretty significant portion of the cows that are coming back with new infections are gonna be these ones. So we've got 33% in November, so something probably happened on the farm. Uh, and then we can take a look at the grid to get a different view of this. If you're more interested in numbers and totals, uh, we can take the we can take the same approach to the graph, but you've got from left to right, healthy cows, cured cows, chronic infections, and then new infections. To me, it's a little bit more striking to see the new infections by percentage. And we've got over half the year where we're over 10% uh, new infections after dry off. So maybe that could be a place to start digging into um, new treatment protocols or something like that to help reduce the mastitis incidence, reduce the mastitis calls, and get some more productivity. Related to the productivity part, uh, I think the SPP report summary is a really nice place to see how you're doing throughout the lactation. So we'll jump over there and take a look at the cows over a lactation to see if the, the theory about third lactation cows having more mastitis in early lactation reflects in the lactation curves. Just quickly interrupting, uh, uh, Lauren, uh, this uh, report is the same deal as the, uh, the health event analysis, so it's only part of the, the gold licenses. Uh, so if you have silver, you will not find uh, this analysis. Or an out. <laughs> so in this one, we're going to take a look. This screen is showing the milk recording data for SPP. And we've got the lactation. The goal is that this is a level, level line from start to finish. All cows created equal should have the same potential from start to finish of lactation because we're comparing them to the same figure of that 50 days in milk, 60 month old animal or fifth lactation animal. So from here, if we can see that they're pretty flat, it's uh, 45 to 49. So four points or so from start to finish on all cows um, using the milk recording data. If we go into the properties here and choose the milk meters and then take a seven day average, we're gonna get a much more accurate picture of this herd because we're using not just one point in time, we're gonna be using an average of seven days. So this is a real life look at the look at the herd. And when we put it that way, we've got a really flat line uh, that we're looking at across the whole picture of the herd. What I would like to check out here is to see how the different lactations break out. So we've got first lactation here now, and they start out pretty strong. They're pretty persistent and level throughout their whole lactation. Second lactation, they're starting out really well, and then pretty flat throughout lactation, tail off a bit at the end. The third lactation cows, are lower in the front end than we would expect them to be. Um, and this, you know, all factors that we can see from the computer screen lead me to think that there's something related with that mastitis incident in the early lactation and the fertility in feet. Um, that would lead me to think that older cows need some attention on this farm. They're going up actually six points over the course of this lactation curve. So it's a, an interesting way to take a look at it and find out, okay, so if the line's not level, it's dropping here. Um, this is a great point to start where we can go look at, you know, X, Y, Z related to health, fertility, and production and try and pinpoint what's exactly happening with these cows on the farm. Yeah, what I like about this one is that it really takes the focus off of the animal and really brings light uh, under the, uh, the farm management. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, looking at all of this, it's, we saw a lot of unknown things in this database, um, a lot of kind of miscalculated or misplaced data because it wasn't reassigned, it wasn't assigned properly at the time of data entry. So if you're thinking about what can you do today to make your, your herd stronger, it's enter your data properly, 
Uniform's got data validation built right in where we're gonna say, yeah, that makes sense. No, that's not logical. And maybe in the moment that's a little bit frustrating, but I hope you saw today that over time, putting that data in correctly is gonna pay out for you when you're trying to improve performance or pinpoint a, an issue that you may have outstanding on the farm. So. That's great. Uh, do, do we have any questions? I think it's pretty quiet. I see uh, our attendee uh, list is uh, is pretty attentive because I can see if they're paying attention or not. But, <laughs> but this is good. It's crystal clear. Uh, Lauren, uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, for this webinar. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just uh, reiterate again. Uh, so this will be uh, sent to you uh, via email. So you're going to get the, the recording of that uh, of that webinar. And uh, you can also find uh, all the, the, the past webinars on our website at uh, uniform-agri.com. All right. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you, Lauren. And uh, we will see you next week at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs>